Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Good to see you in Sunday school today. Clock on the wall says it's time to get going. I'm glad I'm in church, aren't you, today? I'm glad I'm in church this morning. Well, we've had a lot of changes since last Sunday. I've officially become a grandpa since... <laughs> Brother Bill Cutshaw said if we knew grandchildren were so much fun, we'd have had them before we did our kids. That's, that may be the truth, but I'm thankful everything went great, and uh, both mother and baby's doing very good, and uh, I've officially got the prettiest grandbaby they are already, so... <clears throat> it's amazing how everybody thinks their grandkids is the best, isn't it? Well, I'm just thankful that everything is good. We've got Brother Chad Austin with, with us today, and if you don't know what's happened, it's, it's a miracle. It's a miracle Brother Chad is with us today, and uh, thankful for uh, the Lord and his mercy and watching over you say, well, he got cut pretty bad. He's here on Sunday, and uh, when it happened, uh, whatever day it was that happened, Wednesday, uh, and we started hearing reports back from the seriousness of it and uh, what kind of had just bits and pieces of what had happened. Uh, it didn't look good there for a little while, and uh, we thank the Lord that Brother Chad is doing as well as he is, and we're praying for a speedy recovery and just thanking the Lord for his blessings, and his blessings, or Sister Amy has sung about it, her, his blessings just overtake us sometime. And uh, I'm thankful Brother Chad is doing well as he is this morning. Let's continue to pray for his quick recovery. But I'm just thankful the Lord spared his life. Sister Helen Sellers, let's remember her this morning. I see her coming in. It's good to see her in church with us today. Uh, Kermit Cantrell, let's remember him in our prayers. Uh, Brother Ch uh, Chad's brother Ryan, let's remember Brother uh, Ryan Austin in our prayers. Brother Ricky Butler's doing great this morning. Looks like he is anyway. But uh, let's continue to hold him up in our prayer. Brooks Pratt, Fred Dillman, uh, Travis Carter. This is Sister Khan's brother. Let's continue to remember all of these. Charlotte Smith, Tom Roberts. Uh, this will be Sister Christine's nephew who passed away. So we would need to remember this family for comfort during this time. Uh, as I said, continue to remember Brother Chad. And uh, Brother Jamie gave me a prayer request this morning about some friends he had, so let's, uh, we'll put them on a prayer list. Let's just go ahead and stand today. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, anyone's got a spoken prayer request? Yes. Yes, he is. So this is Brother Rogers, Jerry Rogers' uncle, James Plaxico. Let's remember this request. Anyone else? Okay, let's remember Sister Barbie. She's out sick. Sister Doris. Yes. Okay, let's remember this. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we sure will. Let's pray for their family this morning. Anyone, Brother Ricky? All right, Brother Ricky's aunt and uncle passed away. Is that right? His aunt, okay. Let's remember that family in our prayers. God, it's good to know the Lord in these situations, isn't it? He's just a comfort to us in those, but we'll remember that, Brother Ricky. Anyone else? Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. We'll ask the Lord to uh, bless our service and give us what we need today in our service. And uh, remember all these needs. Maybe you can't call them all by name again, but uh, we've spoken the request, as the Bible says. Make your requests known. We've made those known. And let's pray today that uh, the Lord will move in these situations. Brother Rogers.
All right, you may be seated this morning. Come on, ushers, and get our Sunday school offerings today. As our ushers are taking up our offering, let me uh, tell you about something exciting news for the church we've got happening starting, actually it started last Sunday on Mother's Day, and it will go through Father's Day. And this will be a uh, family teaching uh, every Sunday, and it's called Family Matters, Family Matters. And uh, a lot of things will be addressed that will help our families. You know, no matter what kind of family you've got, if you've got the perfect family in your eyes or if you, your family's uh, upside down uh, and all crossways, the Bible can help us work things out. And it can make the good things better. It can make the better things great. It can make the bad things good. So uh, we've got a series that's starting, and it's called Family Matters. And today is Graduation Sunday. Graduation Sunday at Gospel Tabernacle. You'll see the tables set up uh, outside and uh, go by and visit those tables. But uh, this, will, this is part of our family teaching series. And today is going to be talking about, Brother Levi will be talking about overcoming uh, and obtaining to different goals such as our graduates have. Uh, they've hit a goal in life and now they will set another goal. And uh, he'll be talking about obtaining goals and reaching goals and uh, milestones in our lives and things that we've uh, been through and things that we'll go through and how to overcome those. So I'm looking forward. It's going to be a great series. Don't miss any of these. This is going to be Family Matters. Every one of them is going to be good. And today is Graduation Sunday. Well, we've got a gentleman that's been graduated a long time that's going to teach for us this morning. <laughs> you did graduate, didn't you? He graduated kindergarten. Come on up here, Brother Rogers. Brother Rogers is going to be teaching for us this morning, and I know he's going to do a great job. I'm looking forward to it today. Y'all make him welcome, Brother Rogers. Hey, man, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hey, man, I'm thankful for his blessings on our life. I'm thankful the Lord kept his hands on Brother Chad. Hey, man, I want to to teach this morning on the hedge of protection. Amen. How many believe we need a protection around us? Amen. The scripture says the Holy Ghost is our protection. The scripture says the Holy Ghost will lead us and guide us in all truth. It is what leads us in the day and hour that we're living in. We ever needed a protection? We need a protection. We need protection in the church. We need a protection in our country. We need a protection in everything that we do. And, and this morning, I want to be teaching on uh, the hedge of protection in the book of Job, chapter number one. It talked about that Job was an upright man, and he stewed evil, and he prayed to God always. It was Job that was a perfect man. And many times in throughout, you go through life, people will say, well, you can't live perfect. You can't be perfect. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48, it said, be ye therefore perfect if your heavenly Father in heaven is perfect. does not mean you can be perfect to man, mankind, but you can be perfect to God. And the scripture says that Job was a perfect and upright man that issued evil. He the Bible said he prayed to God always. He had a he prayed and he he prayed to seek the things of God in his life. There was the time that, that and if you read in the book of Job, chapter number one and verse ten, it said, "Thou hast to, have the Lord said, hath not considered my servant Job that you got a hedge about him. The hedge that God has placed up in our life is to protect us." from the things that come against us in our life to protect us from the enemy. If you think we don't have an enemy today, you're bad mistaken. We have an enemy today. We have an enemy that's against us. In verse number 10, it said, Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that hath not ever side that hast blessed the work of the hands and subjects increased in the land. That Job, if you read the first chapter of Job, 
The Bible said his substance was he had seven sons and three daughters. He lost all of them. Scripture says he had seven sheep. He had 7,000 sheep, and he lost all of them. The Scripture says he had 3,000 camels, and he lost all of them. He lost all of them. He lost all of the, his she donkeys. He lost all of his donkeys. He had 500 she donkeys, 500 donkeys. He lost it all. But Job had a hedge about him because God said to Satan, have you not considered my servant Job? But God, you got a hedge about him. God has placed a hedge in your life, a protection on your life every day. He places in your life, and God takes care of us every day in things that we don't say just as he took care of Brother Chad Wednesday when that Saul got up on him. God had the armor of protection on Brother Chad's life. He had a protection on his life that like you'd never seen before. God does many things in our life that we don't even see, that God blesses our life throughout all our days. Well, if you would go and you would read it in the last chapter of Job, chapter 42, it said that all that Job lost, that God gave him back. You find that in the scripture that he had 7,000 sheep, but God replaced him with 4,000 sheep. He placed him with those camels, and he had 3,000 to give him 7,000 of them back. He gave him his sons. He gave him his daughters. He gave him the donkeys that he had. Even he gave him, he had 500 of them. He gave him 1,000 of them back. So God is in the protecting business and in our life that we would put our total trust in him, the, the army of protection in our life, every day in our life. In Psalms 4 and 4 in verse number 1, it says, Hear me when I call, O God, that my righteousness thou hast not enlarged thee when I was distressed. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. That sometimes that you pray and you think that, my Lord, my prayers are hitting the ceiling. They're not getting anywhere. But God hears your prayers today. God places a protection on your life and your family's life every day. When you get in that vehicle and you go down the road, God has got his angels. The scripture teaches us, and I'm going to be reading this scripture in a little while. The scripture said the angels are accounted about them that love him and fear him. The angels are all around you today. But you know, the Bible even stated that the angels desire to look in to see what we have today. But they cannot do that. And verse number two says, Woe, sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after less salah? If many, I've looked up the word salah, and if you would look up the word, it really is biblically saying that you can't beat that because it, you can't beat what God does. Our God is a good God. He is a righteous God, and he is a good God today. I'm so thankful to know that he is good to his people, and he don't hold anything against them that walk with him and serve him. In verse number three, but know that the Lord has set a part that is godly for himself, for the Lord will hear when I call upon thee. He's going to hear you unto him. He's going to hear you when I call unto him. He's going to hear you. In the times, what does the scripture say? In the times of trouble, we can call upon him, and he's going to be there with us through the storms of life, through the things that we go through in our life. And then it says in verse 4, Stand in woe and sin not. Commune with your own heart for upon your bed and be still to lie. We see that word again in the book of Psalms. We see that, that they, was David was writing, and, and no matter what you're going through today, no matter the storm that you're facing today, that God's going to be with you, just like we was with Brother Chad. I'm so thankful that God had his hand upon his life. 
In the book of Psalms 32, in verse 7 says, Thou art my hiding place, and thou shalt preserve me from the trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with the songs of deliverance to lie. It is that God is going to protect his people. Do you know that in these, throughout all the scriptures that God protects us with spiritual protection? God protects us through our prayers, and we seek the face of God in our lives. The psalmist wrote in Psalms 121, he said, I will lift my eyes to the hills, and once did my help come, my help come from the Lord that made the heavens and the earth, because God has got a hedge of protection in your life today. God's got a hedge about you. The scripture says, pray without ceasing. And so we know that we pray and we seek God that the scripture says he's not going to be far from any of us. That he hears your prayer today. He hears when you call upon him in the times of trouble that we're living in today. In Psalms 34 and verse number 7 said, The angels of the Lord encamped about them that fear him and, and deliver them. That, that he is encamped about them that love him and fear him. The angels are going to take care of you today. Amen. They sang a song, the Lord's going to take care of me. He's going to take care of the sparrows. He's going to take care of you, what you're going through in your trial and things that you're going through in your life today. And I love the book of Psalms, Psalms 91 and verse number 4 says, He that dwell in the secrets of the place of the Most High God shall abide upon the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortune, my God in whom I will trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the flower and from the noise of pestilence. In verse number four, it said, he shall cover thee as the feathers as under the wings thou hast. Truth shall be shield and buckler. That God has got a place of protection upon you. In our life today, the scripture said here he's our shield and he is our buckler. The Lord is everything that we need this morning in our life. We think that sometimes that God, we pray and we can't, where are you, Lord? But he's there. He's hearing our prayer today. And he's keeping his eyes up on us. He keeps the, he, he's going to keep his hands on the sparrow He's going to take care of you today. He's going to take care of everything in your life if you would totally commit and put your trust in him today. He's going to protect us through the storm that we go through in this life. Isaiah 59 and 19 says, So shall the fear the name of the Lord from the, from the west and his glory from the rising to the sun and when the enemy shall come in like the flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. It's because God is going to have a hedge about you, just as he had a hedge about Job. In your life, the Scriptures teaches us that God is no respect to person. It was in the book of Job that his, his wife said, My Lord Job, you surely have done something against God. Look at your life. Look at you. And Job was required in her request was to her is, is that naked I came into the world and naked I'm going to leave this world. I know if you read the book of Job chapter 14, he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know what I'm facing. I know what I'm going through. If you never went through a trying times of your life, you never need God. But that's the purpose and the reason today in our life, amen, that we go through the troubling times of life, that everything is not going to be rosy all the time. It ain't going to be even rosy living for God. People think, just, well, you come and you start serving God and you living for God, you're not going to have no problems. They're going to find you, my friend. They're going to come to you just like they do those that's out in the world. It's going to come to them. And so it's very important in our lives to realize that God has placed a hedge about you today. 
know many times that, that Satan has came against the Lord, against your life, and said, have you not been my sinner, sinner my servant, Chad? How he's a good and upright man. He prays to God and he, he seeks the things of God. But see, you got a hedge about him. Take the hedge away from him. But see, God, God told him, he said, Satan, you can, you, cannot, you can do things to his flesh, but you cannot destroy his soul. You cannot take his soul. The Bible said, God, we came into the world and God brought us into this world. And brother Keith, if we keep our trust in God and we live for God, God is going to place a hedge in our life. God is going to place a protection in our life that we've never seen before. In verse John 4 and verse 4 says, To you of God, little children, for you have overcome them, because greater is he that he knew than he that is in the world. It's God, how do we overcome? Because God has placed a hedge in our life. That hedge is a protection. The hedge is to keep us from the things of this in, the enemy that's coming to attack us. We have the spiritual protection in our life today when Christ came and lived on the inside of our life to put the Spirit of God on the inside of us. Because we cannot serve God without that spirit living on the inside of us. That hedge was the spirit. That hedge is a protection when it comes against us in our life that we can overcome. Why? Because Christ lives in us. We have a hope today that Christ is living on the inside of our life. And he's went to prepare a place for each and every one of us. And he said, let not our hearts to be troubled in the day and hour that we're living in. Because there's so many things in this life, amen, that will catch a snare to you and cause you to, to cause you to fall. But when you fall, God has placed that hedge about you that in your life. That when the pestilence come and all these things come in our life, that God has placed a protection in our life that we can serve him and we can live for him. Why? Because he's greater than the devil. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because you have that hedge of protection in your life. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter number 10 and verse number 8, he that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whosoever breaketh a hedge, a servant shall bite him. We keep the hedge of God in our lives. Why did the Bible say that Satan was like a servant? He's roaring like a lion, walking about seeking who he may devour. But he'll be bit by the servant. If he takes that hedge away, the only protection that we have in our life is to keep the hedge of protection of God in our life. Every day in our life. And, and, and without the hedge of protection in our lives that we don't have no hope today. But we have a hope because we got the hedge about it. As he, God considered the servant Job, yeah, but you say, God, you got a hedge about him. You got a protection in his life that I can't touch him. He, God cannot, not, Satan cannot touch you unless he gets permission from God. He cannot touch you. He cannot harm you. The scripture tells us that there's no harm shall come to them that put their trust in God, to put your trust in the Lord today. So we put our trust in God. He's going to keep his hand on our life every day. Hebrews 13 in verse number 6, so that we boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I'm not going to fear what no one else thinks about me. It ain't about what somebody else thinks about you. It's what he thinks about you is what counts. And so we put our trust in the Lord today and he's going to protect us and keep his hand on our life. 
one of one of uh, Sister Connie's favorite scriptures in the Bible, in Proverbs 18 and verse number 10, it said, With the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and are saved. The name of the Lord is strong today and tower, and he's going to keep his hand upon your life. In Philippians 4 and verse 13, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Why? Because I got a hedge about me. You got a hedge about you to protect your life and serve the Lord and live for God. In the book of Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 14, the scripture said, The Lord shall fight for you if you shall hold your peace. If you will keep your peace and hold your peace and you will keep the hedge of protection in your life, the Lord's going to fight for you. The Lord's going to fight for me. But here's the thing about it is today. We want to fight the battle on our own. We don't want to give it to the Lord. We want to fight it on our own. But we need that protection today in our lives where we can overcome and we can overcome by the Lord, by his grace and his mercy upon our lives every day. In 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 12 says, For I which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I am, I know that I have, my, I believe and, and persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him to this day. If you would be able to keep that what God has placed in your life, what you believe in, and he is persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto this, this day. You take, for instance, the three Hebrew children boys in the book of Daniel 3. The Bible said that when they heard the sound of the music, they was to bow down to the music. And they said, oh, king, we're not going to bow down to your music. He said that he the our times seven times harder, and they cast him to the fire. But see, there was a hedge about them, a protection in their life. The scripture says that they didn't even have the smell of smoke upon them. The scripture said that even did the hair of their head squints. The hair they didn't have a smell on them, because God had a protection in their life. He had his hedge about them when they was going through the storms of life. When they was going through the valley of their lives, God was protecting them what they was going through in their life. And the spiritual protection in our life is simply in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. It is that that we put on the whole arm of God in our life. That is our protection and spiritual battle that we face in our life every day. In the book of Ephesians chapter number 10, or 6 in verse 10, it said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might, to put on the whole arm of God that you would be able to stand. You put on the arm of God against the wiles of the devil. To put on the whole arm of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you would be able to stand and stand against the wiles of the devil. And verse number 12 says, But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers in darkness and rulers against spiritual wickedness in high places. And verse 13 is what we need to catch attention in in our text this morning too is that what will take into you the whole arm of God that you would be able to stand with, with stand in the evil day having doing all to stand. Why? Because we need the protection, the spiritual protection in our lives over the enemy. It is not God's place, but it is our place to put the whole arm of God on our lives that when we come against Satan, and he comes against us that we have that protection in our life. We have the hedge about us in, in, in our lives today. The spiritual wickedness 
In verse 14, stand therefore, having your learners go to the bout with truth, having the breastplate of righteousness. You know what righteousness is? It's rightly living. It's rightly serving God and rightly doing what God has told us to do in his word. And have your feet shone with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16 says, Above all, take in the shield of faith. Within you, you shall be able to stand to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Why? Because you have the hedge of protection in your life. You have a hedge about you to protect you what you're going through. In verse, the last verse says, Take unto ye the helmet of salvation, the word of the Spirit, which is the word of God. As that spiritual warfare today that we're in, the scripture tells us that our weapons of our warfare are not carnal because we have protection. We have the shield. He's our butler. He's our strong tower. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is a very present help in times of trouble in our life. If we go back and we look at the book of Job, we would see that in that day, the, the Holy Ghost wasn't given because Christ had not been risen from the dead. And so they lived under the law in that day. Job had a love for God to serve God and live for God. He could have gave up if anyone in the Bible had an opportunity, if anybody had a, to turn back and not live for God. I believe it could have been Job for what he went through. The scripture says that Job had sores to the top of his head, to the sole of his feet. He was in agony. But he said, yet I know that my Redeemer living what I'm going through right now. I'm going through a storm in my life. And we go through storms in our life when we lose loved ones. We lose people in our lives. But yet we can still put our trust in God and serving God through the situation that we're going through. As the scripture says, he was a perfect man. He wasn't been perfect to you and I, even though that he, he wasn't even perfect to his friend. But yet he was perfect to God. And Jesus said in Matthew, to be you perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. To be perfect is not being perfect. To, you're not going to make a mistake that you're not going to fail, God. Being perfect is being perfect to God. Not perfect to what other people think about you being perfect to God. Because you're going to be hated for his name's sake. That's what the scripture said. The Bible said you'd be hated on man's name for his name's sake. That you would be hated. People will hate you for standing for truth and God's plan and God's word in, his, in our lives today. As to simply to put our trust in God. That Job, you find that, you know, in the book of Luke, it says, if you give to God, he will give back unto you. Shaking down, he tough, and running over with good measures will God give back to your bosom. It's always been said that you can't outgive God. You can't do it. You can't outgive God. But what Job gave God his life. That is the reason. That's what we must do. When everything comes against us and all things that's going not in our lives the way that we think it should be is that we simply put our trust in God. The scripture says that some will trust in chariots and trust some will trust in horses, but I will remember the name of the Lord because I'm going to put my trust in him. That God is going to make a way. The scripture says when there seem not to be a way that he's going to provide for his people. If you'll serve him and you will live for him and you obey his commandments and you obey his word today, God is going to protect your life. There is a, there is a spiritual 
protection of prayer today is that when we pray earnestly and we seek God in our lives every day, that he's going to keep his angels to protect our lives just as he did Brother Chad. Just as he does every day in our lives when we get into the vehicle and drive down the road. How many times have, have you, when you get up in the mornings, do you, do you get up and you thank the Lord for the day and you say, God, put a hedge about me today. When I get into that vehicle, that I'm going to be protected by you. And those angels of God are going to be count about me that I love him and fear him because the scripture said they're going to be around you. The angels are going to be all around you. They're going to be protecting your life. If you would read all the book of Job that all that he went through and you would see that his integrity that he kept in serving God and living for God, you know what helped and kept him to serve God and live for him in that time as he had a prayer life with God. He had a, com a commitment to God that no matter what I'm going to go through, God, I'm going to keep my prayer life and serving you and living for you, God. Because that's what brings us closer to God. The scripture tells us in the book of James, if we will draw nigh to God, that he will draw nigh unto us. The thing that kept Job through his trying time of his life as he knowed how to pray, he knowed how to seek God in his life. He was an upright man. He, he prayed to God always, the Bible said. And we would find ourselves in better situations if we would pray more in our life. And we would seek God in our life. He prayed always. The scripture tells us to pray always, lifting up holy hands unto God. If we would look in our world today and we see all the prices of gas, and we see the prices of groceries, and we see all the things in our life that this keeps continuing to going up, and we see continually that, that our raise is not going up when we work. But God is simply going to protect us and going to keep a hedge about us in our life. I said, well, just go out there and get all the canned goods that you can get. God is going to keep his hands up on you. David said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. You ain't got to run down there to, and fill the pickup up with pork and beans. You ain't got to go down there and fill it up with, with toilet paper and toothpaste and all those things. Because if you would keep your hand and your hedge around God today, the protection of God in your life, God's going to take care of you. He takes care of the sparrows. He's going to take care of you in your situation, in my situation. It's, it's amazing how when wars come and wars come and all people will come and say, I love you and I want to make peace with you. Just in a few more days, they, they don't, it, goes, it goes away. Because why? They don't keep the hedge of protection in their lives. Here's the thing we need in our lives. And I don't want to get on politics this morning, but we need protection in that White House today. We need the protection in the courthouse of Alcorn County today. We need the protection in our life, amen, over the sheriffs and the police and the ambulances and all those things in our lives today. We need that protection in our life, and the only one that's going to give it to us is Jesus Christ today. Because his name is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and are saved. To continue not to keep your focus upon the things of this life and the things that's coming against this life, but keep your eyes and your focus upon Jesus this morning. Look to him today. Look to him when you're having problems, when you're having troubles today. Seek him in your life. Put a hedge about him. How did Job have the hedge about him? Because he had a protection in his life that he learned, he knew how to communicate with God. That's what we need in our world today, communication. It's the light today of communication. 
It's the lack of knowing who Jesus is today because many would say that they know him today, but they really don't know him in the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of spiritual things that go through in this life today. But we put on the whole arm of God in our lives. It does not do any good in our lives if we just put part of that in our lives. We got to put, Paul said in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, to be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind, to put on the whole arm of God that you would be able to stand the evil day, having doing all to stand, having your learns girded about with truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, having the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, you have these things in your life, amen, when Satan comes and he comes against you, it's just going to bounce off of you. Because those fiery darts, he's going to throw them at you. You have those, you have the weapon today. Because the scripture said their weapons are not carnal. They're mighty through God to pull them down strongholds. Why? Strongholds of protection in our life, in the world that we're living in today. It's in crisis that we're living in today. But we don't put our trust in this world. We put our trust in Jesus today. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with thy whole heart and lean not to thy own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. You see, Job could have gave up. Job could have thrown in the towel. But he said, I came in the world naked and I'm leaving in the world naked. I'm going, I didn't bring nothing in the world with me when I came. But if you read in the last chapter of Job, that God gave him back what he lost. In Job chapter 42, you can't outgive God. The Bible said as many, the church was added daily. It's going to be added. The church of God is not going to go under. The church of the living God is going up because we're going to be victorious in our life because God has placed a hedge about us, a protection in our life over the enemy. Because when the enemy comes in, the scripture says the spirit of the Lord has lifted up a standard against him. The problem we have today is, is that we try to do it on our own and we don't give it to God. We learn to give our trust. We learn to put our trust and give it to the Lord this morning that God will fight our battles. Because in the book of Exodus 14 and 14, he said, the Lord shall fight for you if you shall hold your what? Your peace. He's going to fight for you. He's going to be for you. He's going to be with you when the storms of life come against you in your life. Throughout all the word of God, as we find that people were successful and people had a walk with God and people was faithful to God and serving God, they had a communication with him. They had a direct step from God to receive what he would have in their life. Because the scripture says that we could come boldly for the throne of grace, that we may attain mercy to find grace to help in time of need in our life. God places that hedge about us to protect us from the enemy. He places the hedge about us to serve him and live for him and to be faithful to him. You know, there's words that he's going to say unto us in that day. He's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Why? Because you kept the hedge about you. You didn't take the hedge away. See, God doesn't take the hedge away we can take the hedge away. He's not going to take it away from us, but we can take it away any time we want to. But see, we keep that hedge about us and keep serving God and keep living for God and be faithful. Then we'll hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. And then we will find that he will say to them, I don't know who you are. You work with Nick. I don't know who you are. Depart from me. I don't know who you are. Because why? They had taken the hedge of protection out of their life. It's saying, God, I don't need you anymore. I can do it on my own. There's no way, there's no way that I can do this on my own. And my own ability, 
The only way that I can do it is through Christ today. Why? Paul said that Christ gives me the strength. Christ in me, the hope of glory. He gives us strength to overcome the things of this life today. And we overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you for being in the house of the Lord this morning. I hope I said something that will help you. We need to keep the hedge about us and live for God and serve him and be faithful to him. God bless you. Great teaching, Brother Rogers, on the hedge of protection that surrounds us. No telling how many times the Lord has protected us that we're not even aware of. Uh, if we could really see the big picture sometimes and see what, how close we've came uh, to disaster, uh, it'd probably make us all more thankful this morning than what we are. I enjoyed the teaching this morning. Brother Rogers was teaching from Job, and uh, I don't know if you realize this or not, but the story of Job actually happened when the children of Israel was in Egypt's bondage. If you looked at this in chronicle order, uh, it would be somewhere in Exodus is where this uh, story of Job uh, came about. So there's a lot more to the story of Job than actually the story of Job. It's the situation they were in, uh, even in Egypt's bondage when all this happened. And I uh, thought that was very good teaching this morning, Brother Rogers. And as he was talking about the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation and all the armor that we should put on, there is only one, one thing that's an offensive weapon in this whole section of things that we're put on. Everything else is to protect us against the fiery darts of Satan. Everything else is for protection except one thing. And that is the word of God. That's the only weapon that we have against the devil. You can't use your tongue against him because the Bible says your tongue is a member set on fire from hell. In other words, you're playing right into his hand. If you want to do a tongue lashing with him, he'll outdo us every time. You can't fight him physically because he's a spirit. Only way that you can whip the devil is with the word of God. That is the only way that we can win this morning. Well, it's great teaching, Brother Rogers. I enjoyed it this morning. Got me to thinking about a lot of things. Now, let me tell you about a few events we have happening. As I told you, we're going through a series called Family Matters. This is graduation Sunday. Please stop by the tables. Congratulate our graduates today for the accomplishments. That you know, that was a.